Hey, this is Doug from Refocus. Uh, we really, really important update about what's going on in Lesbos in Greece. Um, there was a massive fire tonight. It was actually really a series of fires that were in Moria and most of the camp has been destroyed. Um, as you know from a recent reports, uh, COVID has been confirmed in a couple of cases and there are many asymptomatic people that were kept in a quarantine area. We reported earlier today about this. Um, and that number kind of doubled within the day. And then late this evening, this past night, uh, people who don't believe that coronavirus is actually in the camp went at this quarantine area and they kind of attacked it, started destroying some cars. And then after some of the people who were stuck inside, these were family members of people who had tested positive or they uh, had tested positive themselves. Uh, this quarantine area was set up by NGOs um, and built previously in case something happened in the camp. And this area was started to being attacked and the people kind of ran away. And then a bunch of fires were being set around the perimeter of the camp. The harsh reality is that that's actually happened regularly in the past. And so people didn't like put too much uh, attention to it. But then those fires really started spreading into lots of other places. And then eventually it went into the main camp. And we the footage that our students have been sending out has been unbelievable. It's been terrifying, giant flames engulfing the entire camp. It's been really, really terrible. And then all of these people were now running away from the fires and all the other chaos that was unfolding. Uh, firefighters came, police were there, all sorts of uh, response to try to figure out how to solve the problems. But it was, I mean, everything inside the camp is just a bunch of wood and bags and just like makeshift shanty houses that people are making structures out of anything that they can find. So uh, it, it all just went up so fast. Uh, then all these people are running out and they're trying to take the street uh, to get out and get into Mitalini. But then the police wouldn't let them pass. So they went into the jungle, into the olive groves to try to get away from the area and to make it into Mitalini. But then the police set up other roadblocks. And right now there are hundreds of people, if not thousands of people that kind of stuck on the highway outside on the main road that goes north to, uh, from Mitalini towards Moria. And they're just out in front of a gas station, in front of the AB market, waiting for it to open to potentially get some supplies. The police haven't let anybody through to provide first response, blankets. You can see how windy it is right now. I'm just gonna take this camera up for a second. You can feel and hear how windy this is. This is right off the edge of where they are. Um, and I'm over at the refugee mother statue, which uh, is for, uh, to honor the 1922 population transfer of Greeks from Anatolia back to the islands. Uh, but it's become a symbol for all of the refugees who are stuck on this island to say that um, they too need the same level of supports and uh, they're not getting it. They're stuck on the side of the road right now. Our students are sending us photos and videos of people just sleeping, literally sleeping on the streets. Uh, 11,000 plus people in the camp right now. It's a giant, it's just, the, some of the fires are still going. At the last time a, a message came through to us, it's almost six in the morning now, so maybe they're all out, but it's a really, really crazy situation. Uh, the, the images that you're about to see that we're gonna be passing your way are just, they're terrifying. They're absolutely terrifying what's going on in here. And then the, just to think that no one's providing any supports right now. They're not allowing NGOs in to, to provide blankets or food or water or anything. And we don't know what's gonna happen when the sun comes up. We don't know what, if they're gonna open the roads. We don't know if they're gonna transport these people to the stadium, to the football stadium here, to the port, but they can't go back into this place that's been destroyed. Uh, and we just don't know what's really gonna happen here. But they've been in this place for six months now, for six months just left in here and I can't wrap my head around the idea or the logic behind the plans that they've put in place to just leave these people in here for six months the people are just absolutely fed up with what what's going on here um, it's six like I said uh, we're going back out there once we get a chance to see if we can go on the road and get a little closer to where we are but uh, the police uh, barricades are still up they block the roads with their riot trucks and their buses and so we're really unsure as to whether or not we're gonna be allowed in to provide any first response supports, but we'll give you more information when we have it.